Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here and welcome to my channel. So we solve a lot of questions on this channel and today we're going to look at DFS and how DFS is used in a maze problem. Okay, DFS stands for Depth First Search and it's a search algorithm that allows uh, graph traversals. So that's exactly what we're going to do today and we're going to use recursion. So very quickly, um, the way that the depth first search is different from the breadth first search is that um, depth first search uses a stack in its implementation while the breadth first search uses a queue. Um, so if you want to know uh, or want me to create a video about the differences between depth first search and breadth first search, let me know in the comments below and then I can schedule that video um, if you guys want to see it. So with that being said, the problem we're looking at today is uh, number of islands, and we are going to use depth first search to solve this problem. We're going to go to each cell in the maze, and the code will try to go up, down, left, and right from that cell. And if it's able to do that, it will go to the next cell, and it will, again, try to go up, down, left, right, and check all its neighbors. So that's how the depth first search works in a maze. At each cell, it goes and it tries to go to its neighbor cell and tries to go up, down, left, and right and do what it needs to do after that. So in a nutshell, that's how we are going to apply DFS um, to solve this problem. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that helps me create these content for you guys. So I will put all the notes in the description below. Uh, there will be a link there that will take you to all the notes and all the pictures that I cover in this video. So don't worry, it will be there for you. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the problem. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna get started and understand the problem. And then I'm gonna write some pseudocode and then do a visual walkthrough of the solution to help you understand fully. So the question is pretty straightforward. What they're looking for is um, how many islands can be formed. So if we have um, ones representing the islands and zero representing the water, we just have to see how many of them are connected. So for this question, the output will be one. Um, as you can see here, there's only one uh, big island that can be created. And we're looking at um, islands that are connected in up, down, left, and right direction. So they should not be connected diagonally or they will be um, considered a separate island. So for that, we have example two here. So in example two, there are three islands. So this is number one, and this is number two, and this is number three. And to help you visualize, I've actually created a map here. So um, it's uh, the green is showing the land. So this is question two and the green is showing the land and the blue is the water. So you can see here there's three islands. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and um, see how to approach this problem and write some pseudocode. Okay, so when we see a problem like this, we know that we need to traverse through each of the cells um, to figure out where the ones are and how we wanna group them, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is have a variable here which is going to be called islands. And this is just going to collect um, how many islands there are. So we will initialize this with zero. And then what we're going to do is we are going to iterate over all the rows and all the columns to visit each and every cell. So this can be done with a nested for loop. So in the outer for loop, you will have your row index, right? So this will have the row index and it's going to go from the zero to um, where R is less than the length of the um, grid. So I'll just say L for short. So this is your outer for loop. And then inside this, you need to put um, the column index. So for each row, so each row, this is row zero, this is row one, this is row two. And for each row, you need to visit the column. So you need to visit uh, zero, zero. So row zero, column index zero, right? So for that, you will say four. And then for every column index, go from zero and go up to um, the length of the columns, right? So the length of the column is going to be, um, you can just grab this length by taking the first, um, length of the first row, right? Because all of the columns have the same length. This is the first row zero, right? So you can grab it that way, okay? So I'll just put L for here, um, but you know that what this is, okay? So we have now two for loops and we're able to visit each cell, okay? Now the next step is, well, what do we need to do when we visit these cells? Well, you need to have a condition to check if it is a one, the cell you're visiting, is it a one or not, right? Because if it's not a one, you don't need to count, you don't need to do anything. So you need to check here, if at my current row and column position, right? If I see a one, okay? Um, so here, the row position is zero and a column position is zero. So you're asking, hey, is this a one at this position, right? And if it is, then you need to do something. Right? So then you need to um, count how many islands there are. 
And we're going to use DFS to do that. Um, and I will put the DFS function here. So we will call our DFS function and pass in um, the row index so we know where to start the DFS, um, the column index, and we'll pass the grid as well because we're going to do this in place. So um, we, we're just sending it over so that we can stamp those um, islands visited, okay? So that's what we need to do here. And then when the call returns, so let's say I start my DFS here and I visit all the neighbors, right? So I have covered all this red area and I'm done and I'm good. So I know that that's my island. So how do I account it back to my return, right? So I need to um, add that. So at this level, I need to add that um, to my islands um, variable here. So is the islands variable is just counting the number of islands, right? So it's going to count the number of islands at when this call returns, right? So this call will go and visit all the neighbors and come back, return back from where it was called. And that's when we need to add the islands. And the last thing we need to do here for this function is just return the islands. Okay. Return islands. Okay, awesome. So we're good. We have our structure now for our main function. And now what we're going to do is write our uh, pseudocode for the DFS function. So this is the DFS function. Okay. And what it's going to do is first have a uh, base case, right? So when you're writing any recursive function, you need to have a base case to let the program know when to stop the recursion, right? So our base case is going to have checks for any out of bound. So what do I mean by out of bound? So if we are traversing this, uh, this index and we try to go up from here, we can't, right? Because there's no elements above that. If we try to go left, there's no elements above that. So we need to stop the call at that point, right? Um, so we'll check uh, the bounds. So we will check if our row index is less than zero, right? Or our row index is greater than or equal to the length. Okay, and then same thing for the column index. So if the column index is less than zero or the column index is um, greater than or equal to the length of the max columns we can have, right? So if this is the case, then just return. Okay, else what we need to do is we need to check um, if we see a one, right? If we see a one, then we need to stamp that as a zero. And we are stamping this because we don't want to return back to this function and then count that one again, right? So let's do a visual walkthrough. So if I'm here, right, I start my call from here and okay, I'm looking up, down, uh, left, right. Okay, so I can't go up, I can't go uh, left, but I can go right. Okay, so then I call DFS on this right uh, cell here, okay? So from the right cell, I can't go up, um, I can't go to the right again because there's water, but I can go down, right? So when I go down, I'm calling the DFS on this cell. And then um, as I'm going, I'm stamping all of these to zero. So I'm marking all of these um, as water. Okay, so let's visualize that. So here I have changed this to a zero. So I've stamped this zero. And then same here, I've stamped this zero. Okay, and then I've stamped this zero. And then lastly, uh, when the DFS is called on this cell, um, it's also going to be stamped zero. So this is the first return um, from the DFS function back here. And what it's going to do at this point is it's going to increment um, one to the island here, right? So this indicates that we have accounted for this one island, right? So that's how the DFS works. And in, the, in this for loop, this will still keep going. And it's not going to mark um, these again because it, it only looks for where grid um, in that row and column index is one, but this is a zero now because we have stamped and drowned those islands to indicate to our program that, hey, we're done accounting for this island. So that's why we're doing that. And then in the um, next call to the DFS, we're going to stamp and um, make this island drown and we will come back here and the islands will be updated to two now for this case. And then in the last call, we are going to um, drown this cell and this cell and then return and update the islands to three. So that's how the DFS is going to work. And at each step, it's going to look up, down, left, and right, and figure out if it's able to um, form an island from the current cell, okay? 
So I hope this helped you understand how the program is going to run. Um, now let's go ahead and look at the code. Awesome. So I'm back in the code, and the first thing I'm going to do is do an edge case check to make sure that if we're given an empty grid, we just return zero because there will be no islands there. Um, so I can check if len of grid is less than one, then we can go ahead and return zero. Okay. So that's done. And now what we need to do is iterate over each of these cells in our grid, right? So what do we need to do for this? So we need to have two for loops to iterate through each cell. Um, so I'm going to write the outer for loop, which is going to go through the rows. So these are the rows here. So this is row zero, this is row one, two, three. And then within each row, it's going to go through um, each of the columns. So these are the columns here. Okay. So I'm going to start with my outer for loop. So for R in range um, zero to, okay, let me just grab the row length and column length here. So it's just easier for me to access them. So row length is going to be the length of the um, grid. And then the column length is going to be um, the length of the grid at index zero. So we're looking for this length here, right? So this is index zero. Okay, so now that we have that, we can say for R in range uh, zero to row length, so R will be our row index and C will be our column index. So I will say for C in range zero to column length. Okay, I'm missing a semicolon here. Okay, so this is how we're going to iterate through each cell um, in the loop. Uh, and then what we want to do here is check when to trigger our um, DFS function. So the trigger is when we see a one, right? So when we encounter this one, we want to trigger the DFS. Um, so we will just write if grid at the index of row and column is equal to one. Uh, yeah, these are strings, so yeah, equal to one. Um, then what we need to do is we will call our DFS function. So I'm going to call that find. And in that function, um, I will pass in the row, column, and the grid. Okay. And let's call this self.find. And okay, so that's good. And we also need to have a um, way to actually accumulate the number of islands, right? So we need to have a counter. So I can call this counter islands. Islands equals zero. So we'll initialize it to zero. And um, once this call returns, so the find call, if it starts here, it's going to go um, left, right, up and down, like all four directions at each cell. And whenever it is done um, navigating all the neighbors, it's going to return here and add to the island. So that's how uh, we will structure this code, right? So I'll say islands, plus equals one. So when it returns from this call, um, we know that it has uh, identified an island. So that's how we're um, counting the islands. Okay, so this looks good. And the last thing we need to do is return the islands. Okay, great. Um, now what we're going to do is write our uh, function for the find. So this is our DFS function and I can say def find. So remember, this is the one we're calling to do the actual uh, traversal and to sync the islands. And it's going to have the same parameters. So it will have, uh, uh, it will have self, it's going to have a uh, row index, column index and grid. Okay, awesome. So we have that here. Okay, looks like I have a typo here. This should be self. Okay, awesome. So what we want to do is write our base case. So I will say if um, the row index is less than zero, or um, the row is greater than or equal to the length of the grid. So these are just checking if our index is out of bounds. So if we're trying to access something that's over here, um, or is something that is greater than our um, last element, we just want to return because we cannot check over there, right? So it's going to give us an index out of bound error. Um, okay, so or uh, if our column is out of bound, that's the next thing we're going to check. So if our column is less than zero, or our column is greater than equal to the length of um, the grid at index zero, right? So if these cases happen, we want the recursion to return. So we'll say return. Okay. Otherwise, we need to um, check if um, the spot we are at is also a one. Um, so I will say if grid at the index of row and column 
is equal to 1, then we're going to do the syncing. So we're going to stamp that place that, hey, I've already checked this, don't um, count it again um, in our for loops here, right? So we don't want to keep counting the uh, ones that we have already grouped as an island. So that's why we need to stamp them as um, zero. So we don't go and um, count them again. So I will say grid row column equals zero. Okay, so now we have drowned those um, ones that we have counted. And now the last thing we need to do is we want to uh, go up, down, left, and right. So if I'm here, I'm going to try to go up. I can't. I will return. I will, I will try to go uh, to the left, and I can't. Uh, I will return. But when I try to go to the right, I'm able to do that. So it will go here. So we're going to check every um, possible direction from each cell. Okay. So I will write the code for that. Um, so we want to recursively call the find function. So we'll say self dot find and um, it's taking the row, column, and the grid. So what we want to do is first check, um, we will first check up, so R minus 1. So that's going to, if we're here, that's going to try to go here. Um, and then we want to check um, down, so that's R plus 1. So we'll say R plus 1. And then we want to check C plus 1. So we'll say here C plus 1. So that's going to take us to the right. So if I'm here, I will uh, go here. And lastly, we'll check the C minus one. Okay, so that's gonna, oh, oops, that's gonna take me to the left. Okay, so this looks good. I'm just gonna run code and make sure there's uh, no typos. Okay, so it looks like it worked. All right, so let me go and submit. Awesome, yay, it works.